are listening to the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast, a show by personal trainers for personal trainers. It's time. It's time to become a better trainer, get more clients, and change more and lives. Change more lives. And now, here's your host, the head coach and founder of Fitness Mentors, Eddie Lester. Hey guys, welcome to the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast, episode number thirty-eight. We are now into the year 2021, and I'm extremely excited to be back in the podcast booth, ready to deliver some amazing content. So this particular time of year, personal trainers are really gearing up to help people achieve their New Year's resolutions. It's one of the busiest times of year, and also one of the busiest times of year that personal trainers will say, sign up to get a certification, or in which new trainers are trying to get certified. So I figured this particular week, I wanted to help those that are kind of just either signing up to get certified or looking to get certified in the coming months. And I wanted to have the topic and discuss what you should do in your first week as a personal trainer. So you you sign up, uh, you do all your studies, and then you get certified, you pass your test, woohoo! And then now what? That's really the the, the point of uh, what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, with that in mind, I wanted to start off by just giving you some of the basics. Okay, so you are now certified as a personal trainer and you're deciding, you know, what to do, what moves should I make, that sort of thing. Well, let's get all the basics covered. First tip, what you should do after you get certified in that first week, update your resume. It's very important as a personal trainer to have an updated resume, especially if you're looking to train in a gym. You know, some of you may have already uh, have a connection that you're already going to start working as soon as you are certified, but others you may want to start applying at gym. So first thing to do is update your resume with your new certification. Provide the uh, certification, uh, the uh, credential that you have uh, from what company, and then also the year that you got the certification. That should be down in your uh, either education portion or certifications portion under your previous experience in your resume. Once you've done that and you know you want to work at a gym nearby in your local area, the best thing that I think you can do is take that resume Put on some fitness attire or whatever uh, the gym trainers wear at the particular gym that you're looking at and walk right into that gym with your resume and your certification in hand and ask for a job. One of the most important things to a gym is confidence that a trainer can display when being in front of people. And while, you know, it's a, a lot of times in, in other job, we'll say situations which you're getting hired, you may turn in a resume, may, might get a call back, might not. Um, and it's just kind of left open in the air and you're not really sure where, where the next steps are. The best thing you can do when you are a new trainer is to walk into your gym of choice, hand them your resume and say, hey, I'd love to talk to someone about working here as a personal trainer. I just got my certification and I'd love to know a little bit about uh, you know the, the job or if you guys have an opening for personal training. And what that really does is it tells your hiring manager or the owner of the gym that you're serious and you have the confidence to walk into any room, shake some hands, smile, and ask for something that you would like, like the sale of personal training. If this is your, your, your first sort of week as a personal trainer, uh, you need to understand that a lot of personal training, what we do is sales related, especially when we think about working in a gym as well as even being successful privately. So give, showing that confidence by walking into a gym with your resume and certification and saying, hey, I just got certified. This is my number one gym. I'd love to work here. Do you have any openings or could I talk to your hiring or your personal training hiring manager? Boom. One of the best things you could possibly do. This is actually the way that I got my first job. I legitimately was certified. The following week, I just walked into my, my gym of choice. It was actually an Equinox and uh, went straight up up or to the front desk and said, hi, is, yes, is there a hiring manager that I could talk to about personal training? They brought that person down. I shook their hand, looked them right in the eye and said, yeah, no, and I'm, I'm very interested. I just got certified. This is my favorite gym. I'd love to work here. Do you have any openings? 
She took me upstairs and right there on the spot, I had a two hour interview uh, in which I talked to the uh, personal training manager as well as the uh, uh, personal training assistant manager got, got fully toured around and then later that afternoon got a call and said I was hired. So what this really does is it provides you an opportunity to show your confidence in the position that you're going to be having, which is personal training. So that is the first two things that I recommend if you just got certified. This is your first week as a personal trainer. That's if you want to work in a gym. Boom, do it, show that confidence, walk in, get it done. All right, next one is let's say you're certified and you're not really sure if you wanna work in a gym or you might wanna train some clients privately or maybe you just uh, aren't ready to fully commit to a gym job yet, what is what should you do in this situation? I highly recommend reaching out to family and friends and even just acquaintances and asking if anybody would like to participate in some personal training with you. And this can be free, this can be $20 an hour, this could be $30 an hour, it could be whatever you want, but it's very important to build your confidence as a personal trainer by training people right away. And this is gonna be fun for you because it's your first clients. Uh, they might be paying, they might not be. Uh, as a heads up, people that pay will be more committed to working with you, so that's very important. Even if it's a simple 10 to $20 per hour fee. Put your, put your name out there, maybe post on social media. Hey, I'm looking for five people to help get me started. I just got certified last week, super pumped, but really wanna help five people uh, uh, get in shape you know, uh, right now. Uh, go ahead and comment below if you'd like to, to help me out. Or, uh, uh, and, and then you're basically gonna start DMing people and uh, messaging people through social media. Or if you wanna keep it even more personal, you can reach out to just friends and family through your cell phone, through text message, through phone call. What, is, what this is going to do for you is it's going to set you up to have the confidence to charge more, more quickly. When you are first starting, you're not really sure you know, how much you can charge. You're not really sure of, of uh, your confidence level in training or getting someone to their goals. But as soon as you get that first client or two, a great workout that they love and they enjoy, and then you start to see progress as far as uh, assessments and reassessments with them getting towards their goals, your confidence level is gonna go through the roof and allow you to you know, really feel confident when you don't know someone and they want to, or, and you want the, to train them or they want you to train them. It's so important to, to get that first bit of experience and be confident in your ability to train. And with that in mind, this is going to allow you to create programs, which you've learned in your certification. Uh, maybe you've uh, gone through the Fitness Mentor Certified Personal Trainer Certification. Maybe you've chosen another credential. But what this will allow you to do is take that programming chapter that you learned all about how to create a great fitness program and put it to use and watch people go through one of your workouts. It's one of the most rewarding things to put together a great workout, take somebody through it, and they love it. They're sore, they sweat, they feel good, and then you delivering your personal experience of having them uh, you know, enjoy that workout uh, is so, so, so rewarding and will build your confidence a ton. Now, if you aren't training anyone and you're just certified and you don't really wanna train anyone yet and you still wanna get your confidence level up as a personal trainer, I recommend, and this is another tip, create a fitness program from that programming program design chapter and you perform it, or you take yourself through it for one straight month. Create a four-week program that includes, uh, you know, all of your resistance training, your strength training, uh, your uh, your cardiorespiratory training, your flexibility training, corrective exercise, whatever it is that you choose to need for yourself to get yourself towards a goal, and then take yourself through it. Also, don't be afraid to include maybe some nutritional guidelines that you wanna to stick to as well or you want your clients to stick to in the future. Is the program easy? Is the program too hard? Uh, did, did, are the variables that you chose appropriate for the goals that you want to achieve? Do they feel right when you're going through the workout? Is nutrition doable? Was it too strict? Uh, what, were, how, did, were you able to ad adhere to a specific nutritional strategy that like you want your clients to stick to? Getting yourself involved relating to that experience of the programs that you create is so, so, so important to build your confidence. And that's without even training anyone. 
This is taking yourself through it and committing yourself. And that, in my opinion, is almost just as important as training someone down the road because you're going to get the experience of what it feels like to go through a specific program with very specific and strict rest periods, rep ranges, loads, exercises, maybe they're for stability or strength or whatever your goals are. Going through more and more programs on your own and treating yourself like you are a client is very important to helping people succeed once uh, you're actually a personal trainer and helping people in the field. So um, once again, guys, I know right now we are still currently kind of, or we're in the pandemic and there uh, might be only access to virtual training styles or training people virtually, maybe through uh, you know a streaming service or FaceTime or Skype or Zoom, uh, whatever that may be. So if that is the case, you can still do all of that by helping people through the internet. Now, if you know you want to be an online personal trainer as your full-time job, we have our certified online personal training certification that will teach you every single thing you need to know to be successful in program design, assessments online, through Zoom, through phone, um, as well as uh, all the program design elements of what it looks like to take someone through a workout virtually via video or uh, without you being present. Also, all the, the business and sales and marketing stuff that you need to build an online personal training business. If that's your route and you have a CPT certification but want to train online, I highly recommend our courses. That's really going to allow you to set yourself up for success way more quickly than tr trial and error on your own online. But if you are, we're say, kind of stuck at home, you aren't able to train people in person or, or reach out and get clients in the way you'd like, what should you be doing to help yourself or set yourself up virtually the first week that you're certified? We definitely recommend first purchase a domain name that you like for your business. Maybe it's uh, for me, it's a uh, uh, eddielester.com or a uh, uh, eddielesterpersonaltraining.com or eddielesterpt.com. Something like that that will allow you to have something to build from uh, as you are working and building your business online. You don't have to build anything right away, but you can easily hire someone through Fiverr to put together a very quick website for you. That's fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R.com. I highly recommend that for any, any online personal trainers that need simple stuff done on the internet. Or you can even go through Wix, maybe build your own site very simply uh, that, that will allow you to almost utilize it as more of a business card for your online training services, meaning, hey, check check it, check it, me out, go to uh, eddielesterpt.com and you can read all about the way that I train online and certain things like that. So get your domain name. This is if you want to, uh, and really this is if you want to be in-person trainer, private trainer, online trainer, get a domain name that, that you can use in the future. I highly recommend that. Next is going to be to update your Facebook profile. Now this sounds, uh, you know, it's, it sounds pretty pretty simple and, and obvious, but you need to update your personal trait or your, your, your profile on Facebook or Instagram and tell people that you are a certified personal trainer. This allows people to recognize that when you're, when you're, you're giving advice that you are qualified uh, within the fitness realm to provide advice on exercise. Also, it lets people know that, hey, maybe they were looking for a personal trainer and they connect with you somehow and they can see that you are a personal trainer. Update your Facebook profile photo with you in fitness attire. Update your Facebook background image or your header image that, uh, and basically say that you help people get in shape doing, doing what exactly uh, or maybe a specific niche that you help. Like uh, I help uh, postpartum females gain back their, their, their pre-baby body, something like that. Um, letting people know what you do is so important when you think of social media. So that is the uh, updates for online training right there. And really when we think about uh, any additional stuff, I'm going to provide one more tip. Definitely get business cards made as well. I, I really like to see when personal trainers are out in, in the world and uh, they're talking to people and, and you're, you're networking to some extent. Having a business card on hand in your wallet or in your purse allows you to quickly hand that out and let people know that you are a serious personal trainer and uh, you know a well-designed business card can be done so easily online. There's hundreds and hundreds of business card services that you can get for 
anywhere from like five to fifteen dollars. You can get a hundred business cards or a thousand business cards, whatever you'd like. But it's very important to to establish yourself once you're certified. And I think that's that's so important. And kind of the point of today is is what do you need to do right now to set yourself up for success in the first week or month of being a personal trainer? Maybe you're studying right now for the NASM certification or the ACE certification. Uh, we have great study tools if you are going through that right now uh, on our website. Or maybe you're in the Fitness Mentors CPT certification or online CPT certification or online personal trainer certification. Um, we want to make sure that your first steps into this industry are easy and fluid and set you up for the most success. So that's kind of it. That's all I got for this week on the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast. Uh, tune in weekly. We'll be doing a podcast all about you know starting as a CPT, succeeding in marketing, uh, online, offline, in the gym, starting your own gym, private personal training, whatever you choose to do in this industry, in the fitness industry, as a coach, as a trainer, as a, a, some, a nutritionist helping people with their nutrition or stress management, whatever it is, we are here as your first resource for success. Thanks so much for checking out the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast, episode number 38, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. As always, thanks for listening to the Certified Personal Trainer Podcast. You can learn more about Fitness Mentors at fitnessmentors.com. Be sure to share this podcast on social media. And remember, we are here to help you succeed. Help you succeed.